we don't know how brains work and we can never know how our brains work. Whether we can develop better, more exact tools to figure out how, see how we're thinking while we're thinking, uh, well, this is one of those science fiction questions. I think there are going to be limits into how well we can understand how we think. And since we don't understand how we think and maybe can't ever, maybe one of those barriers that we can't get past, um, the idea that we could then concoct something that thinks like we do is seems to me more remote than ever. But I have my reasons for thinking about this in terms of AI, and I have written entire novels in which the AI is the narrator. So I've had a lot of laughs, I must say, pondering what artificial intelligence might be like when it's tasked with, say, for instance, write me a novel. Because famously, right now, AI cannot summarize very well. It can't find out points of uh, importance and then summarize them. If you give it the task and it just tries to recombine in the ways that it's been told, well, you get results and they're not uninteresting. Just to go into the some of the AI stuff a little bit deeper, I do think it actually is doing a pretty good job on summaries. Like part of what you're getting is, is you're getting a kind of almost like a kind of a a social collaborative intelligence by the training on on large corpuses of language, which allows it to do linguistic tricks easily. It allows it to do translation, allows it to do, you know, code generation, a bunch of stuff. And some of it is like if you said, like one of the things I think will be a will be a common part of our tool set in the next year or two is, you know, you get a document and it says, for you, here is the summary, or for you, here's the three pieces that are most important to look at, and it will be in a fitness function loop by which it will be getting much better than that. And I do think that one of the things that's interesting about this is that is if you go kind of steam engine of the mind, we're going to be kind of changing our thinking, communication, and analysis patterns because it'll change the kind of where our cognition kind of most leverages the tool. So for example, you know, like, you know, when we had writing, memory wasn't as important, right? Uh, when we have Google, memory is not as important. And so it changes the shape of like which things we need to do. And AI is going to do the same thing, I think, in this kind of symbiotic, you know, re uh, relationship uh, with us. And so I think that's some what we'll see. But I think it plays very well into your kind of the social technology, post-capitalism, science fiction for you know, some of the thinking you're doing. And that's the reason I'm kind of, I'm, I'm nudging you a little bit more in that direction because I would love to see what you will make of it in your future writings. Well, thank you for that. And you did send me indeed a, a personalized uh, narrative where uh, uh, Kim Stanley Robinson was the prompt for the AI to personalize. And, and it was pretty amazing. And it's pretty clear that whatever's going on in these large language models, they are certainly doing a lot of work, um, uh, trillions upon trillions of operations to get to um, what Marx would have called the general intellect. And this is what everybody has said about this before. And you're right. It's, uh, um, well, I don't know if it's summarized so much as it's collated. Um, if you see the distinction I'm making, enough sentences have been searched that match that when you put it together, it makes a grammatical and sometimes a logical whole that is new. There are some people you can see just scoffing at large language models as being um, nothing but recombinations of previous sentences that have been sorted by probability. I don't think that's true. I can see that there's something a little more generative going on. And so that implies to me that the programmers are doing interesting things. Not that the AI is doing interesting things. It is. But it's doing them because the programmers have thought up inputs and or and instructions that are actionable at the level of computation. Um, this is pretty great programming. Mm -hmm.